Just a few days away from the Monday night matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Eagles got some really good news with several guys officially back at practice, but not so much for Tampa. How serious is linebacker Devin White's injury? And Jordan Davis issues a warning to the Bucs, as well as the rest of the league. But first, let's run it. Hey guys, here we go. Just a couple more days until Eagles football. But let's start with the Eagles announcing a partnership with Sports Beams, which is the award-winning tech company with the cutting-edge LED lights like you saw at the Birds' home opener, and will now be a proud partner of the team for the next three years. Meaning, the best news of all of this is that in case you missed out on the home opener like I did, you won't miss the light shows if you go to any night game. Speaking of which, I'm going to be at the Dolphins game next month, so would love to hang out with anyone before the game if you're going to be there, as well as take in the primetime action. Thankfully, we've got some more primetime action on Monday against the Bucks, where QB Jalen Hurts has a little extra motivation after the 2022 playoff defeat. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a whole bunch of things. I, I think I'm um, I'm wired to, uh, you know, wired to, to give my best and to play to my standard. Um, but a little extra inspiration never hurts. Look, this is personal, or at least Bleeding Green Nation's David Hoffman argues it is, reminding the Buccaneers have beaten the Eagles five straight times, including the playoffs. So it's been since 2013 that the Birds have knocked off those pesky Pirates. Which, sure, we want to win, but that's against every team. Except by intentionally scheduling a Rondé Barber Hall of Fame celebration ceremony on the night they play the Eagles, that's next-level trolling. I mean, none of us really need to or want to relive the 2002 NFC Championship game. I don't know. I guess more power to you in that situation. And personally, I just want to win. But curious if that made it personal for any of you guys. On the flip side, despite the Bucks seeing some weaknesses a couple years ago in Jalen, and even recently QB1 receiving a lot of national criticism for subpar play, Bucks head coach Todd Bowles doesn't agree, saying he's been playing some outstanding football. Heck, even Bowles starting quarterback Baker Mayfield sees it too, saying in a recent press conference that Jalen's a tremendous leader. Mayfield said his play speaks for itself, but his work ethic is extremely important to him. And you can see that resonates with the whole team. Every team he's been on, he's never changed. That's the special thing about him. Okay, come on. It's not hard to see that he's breed of one when it comes to leadership, but Jalen had a response for critics who might be complaining about his level of play. What I'm telling you is it's not about me. It's about us. And so if, if, um, if they are doing something there for me, we got 250 yards rushing to, you know, to do that. And so there are multiple ways to win. And um, the, the, the thing that I want to make clear is when did winning not become the main thing? I always say keep the main thing the main thing where, you know, winning is the only thing that truly matters. And so obviously you have important things, right? You have priorities. And I think you have 1A and 1B. 1A is winning. 1B is playing to the standard. Now you can win but not play to the standard and you're still unfulfilled. You can play to the standard and not win, and you're still unfulfilled. So, so what matters? I mean, Jalen's not wrong, and he makes a great point. Now, of course, and he even alluded to it, I think we all recognize the birds haven't played to the standard, but like he said, we're 2-0. and So you just keep getting better each day, like Sirianni says, ad nauseum, and then the hope is that the standard follows it. But the question is, do you think we'll see a drastic improvement Monday night? Either way, at least we can count on our most successful play working. That is, unless the Buccaneers' defense can stop it. As Bowles suggested, it could come down to a couple short yardage situations, saying, we're going to stop the Eagles' QB sneak. I like you, but you're crazy. Okay, he didn't actually say they're gonna stop it, more so like they've gotta stop it, but either way, you're crazy to think you have a chance. I know, you're right, the Bucks are stout up front, being led by Vita Vea, and he'll no doubt be a challenge. Except this is Jason Kelsey and the best O-line in football we're talking about. Plus, they've had more than enough challenges from our own D-line. Yeah, Jordan Davis is a big dude. Don't say it. And he's also a major reason for the Eagles ranking as the top rushing defense in the league, while also ranking as the fourth highest graded defensive tackle in the NFL through two weeks. Although it's not really a surprise to see JD discard double teams and stack up the run game, because the dude's a monster at 6'6", 340. And honestly, he could have a fantastic career just being the run stuffer. Like he said on multiple occasions, two on me means somebody's free. However, the dancing bear isn't satisfied being one-dimensional, saying, I don't want to be known as just a run 
run stopper. I want to be more than that, an all-around guy. Well, he certainly has been so far, with the 23-year-old recording one and a half sacks in two games after registering zero in 13 games as a rookie. And look, I'm all for it, yet it's not completely surprising that he's having the success already, is it? Since remember back in camp, four-time All-Pro Fletcher Cox was impressed by JD's conditioning, saying it's way better than it was last year, noticing Davis flying around in individual drills as well as team drills and one-on-ones. And even Brandon Graham felt like it was possible, saying he was excited for Jordan and thought the second-year player was going to take a great jump from year one to year two, which is one of the main reasons this early success isn't surprising to defensive coordinator Sean Desai. My experience of him has been that he's got it in him to be this explosive, uh, physical, knockback type of player uh, and and disrupt games, and, and he's done that. You know, our challenge is always going to be, not just with him, with everybody, is to keep stacking that and keep developing consistency that way over a longer period of time, whether it's within a full quarter of a game, 70 plays, and now through the season. All right, obviously I love to see and hear the progression so far. Granted, it's still early. However, JD said this season's been different in how he's approached each day by watching more tape, eating right, taking notes, and being honest with his self-evaluation to be the best player he can be. Because like we saw in the third and nine versus the Vikings last week, Davis is motivated to stay on the field. Whenever situation they throw me in, that's what I want to do. So um, whether it's third down, first down, you know, I always say my job is to get them to third down, but now I kind of want to be on the field. So whatever I can do, just hold value, just maintain, do what I can. Okay, sure. He's not your prototypical pass rusher. And would we want guys like a Fletcher Cox and Milton Williams and Jalen Carter on pass rushing downs? Sure. Yet this new added layer to his game without question makes the Eagles pass rush that much more dominant. And BG says it's still just the beginning. I'm just happy that um, he ain't just settled for just being a run stopper. You know, we told him that he could be he could be whatever he wanted to be. It's just all about making sure you're in shape to be able to be you all the time. And so I think that's what uh, what he has embraced. And uh, I'm proud of him on that, but I know that he got so much more that he can do. I sure hope so. And I'm interested to see how many sacks he can end up with. What do you guys think? Is six sacks possible? I don't know. We'll see. But let's just say Jake's bank account is starting to sweat since he said, if Jordan Davis gets six sacks, I'll Venmo everybody who likes this comment $10. Which brings me to my main point, And that is that I will not be able to pay for any buddy's tuition. Yeah, well, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't get paid even if this ends up happening because Jake's sitting at about 15 G's owed if JD gets that sixth sack. But despite it being a far cry, I've got the link in the description for the free $10. Tips appreciated, but not required. And speaking of free money, I've also got a promo courtesy of my friends at DraftKings where if you bet $5, you get $200 in bonus bets when you sign up through the link in the description. Which also brings us to the weekly picks against the spread where I regressed last week going one and two, but still sit at a decent record for the season. But here we go. For this week, let's ride with the winless Denver Broncos on the road getting six and a half. And then I'll take the New England Patriots laying two and a half as they take on the Jets. Finally, give me the under 45 total in the Eagles game on Monday night. All right, feel free to let me know how terrible those picks are, but just a reminder to please bet responsibly. I also want to provide the latest on the injury report where the birds receive some good news with James Bradbury, Reed Blankenship, Fletcher Cox, and Kenny Gainwell all being full participants, so should be ready for Monday. And several players were listed as limited in Devontae Smith, Josh Sweat, Jordan Davis. Davis, Zach Cunningham, Jack Stoll, and Boston Scott. However, reports suggest the Eagles are simply being cautious and everyone should be able to give it a go, which means running back Rashad Penny will most likely go back to inactive, assuming Boston Scott ends up playing against the Bucks. In fact, the only two players who didn't practice were Quez Watkins, as I've talked about previously with a hamstring injury, so in all likelihood won't be playing, and then Terrell Edmonds was out again due to an illness, which would possibly make rookie Sidney Brown the first man up if Reed Blankenship or Justin Evans needs a breather at safety. So ultimately nothing too major and good news for the guys getting healthy. The Bucks may not be so lucky though, as two starters were added to the injury report in right guard Cody Mock, who's dealing with a back problem. So not really a great sign to begin with. Plus like Brandon Lee Gowton shared, the rookie blocker was already seen as a weak point on the Bucks O-line anyway. However, the biggest name to get added is linebacker Devin White, who I think we all remember requested a trade this off season. It was reportedly fed up with the Bucks. This is my hell. Well, you know what they say, winning cures all or something to that effect, because White recently took to social media saying, this defense is so fun to be a part of, I'm stupid for trying to leave. Young, fast, physical steppers. Okay, good for him, and White even said that he was a little selfish before, but he's fully bought in now. Although he's been dealing with a groin issue, so it will be interesting to see if he plays. I kind of feel like he will, however, first round pick Kalijah Kansi will most likely not play after missing his second straight practice with a calf strain, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it, as well as have a final breakdown 
down an update on Monday sometime around lunchtime. And then also a reminder that we'll be doing live play-by-play and reactions during the Bucks game Monday night. So feel free to stop by as we'll probably give away something really cool as well. This has been the Philly Special.